Greetings class, and welcome to Horror 101. It is I, your purveyor of panic, your maestro of the macabre, your humble teacher and guide, Professor Macabro. Well class, once again I find myself having to apologize for not greasing you with my beautiful mug. Yes, I have a quite a bit of reviews I want to get to, but, well, things get in the way, as it is, unfortunately. Which is ironic, because I still have the damn Infinity Gauntlet. You would think it would be so easy to just freeze time and record, but when you freeze time, you also freeze the camera, so that hasn't quite worked out. But, I am back with you all to share horror, chills. Frights! That's right, I'm going to do the easiest thing that I can do, and that's a horror DVD update video. Is it the cheap way to go? You're damn well bet it is, but something is better than nothing. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? You know I'm right. Yeah. So, let's get started and not babble on about things that... Don't concern us, because we're here, or at least I hope you're here, for me and horror movies. So, first off, I believe if memory serves me right, last time I was with you, I shared the awesome ad of Kong Skull Island. Well, I got in some more monkey business, and I was able to add King Kong. Yeah, there's a quite a bit of movies that are called King Kong, but this is the one that has Jeff Bridges and introduced Jessica Lange to the world of cinema. Uh, not well received, even though I enjoyed the look of Kong. He wasn't stop motion like in the original movie, or at least this was before CGI, so he's not computer generated like the Peter Jackson one. Uh, this is more like the Toho approach where he's a guy in a suit and there are scenes that he kind of looks convincing and others not so much but I know a lot of people that hate this movie and uh, particularly criticized Jessica Lange so much to the point that she actually took a sabbatical of a year to train herself into being a better actress but I thought it was pretty cool I thought the monkey suit uh, looked pretty good. It got a lot of emotion out of the suit. Especially when Kong gets the chick all wet. Now, ha ha. Not that way. But in the waterfall, gets her all wet. And it's like blowing air to keep to dry her up. I thought it was pretty cool. But yeah. Admittedly, not anyone's. Everyone's cup of tea. The next one is a blind buy. I've never seen this one. Uh, and this is Evil's City. But a group of people that go into this city that is evil. Uh, usually these blind buys are hit or miss. I can either come across something that's really good. A nice surprise. Or sometimes it's this really low budget piece of crap. Still need to see this one. So I'll let you know either way. Uh, next one I picked up. The original. No. <coughs> I, I know that I fall into this trap a lot. Where I find myself. Comparing an original to a remake and always say, well, most of the time, I will admit, I will say that the original is far superior than the remake. Because 90 out of 10, it usually is the case. And I don't have the original of this one, but I remember this being some really bad CGI at the time. And it didn't quite capture the atmosphere of the original. But this is the remake of The Haunting with Catherine Zeta Jones and uh, Liam Neeson and the always annoying broken nose Luke Wolf. Seriously, with all the money he makes, you would think that he would have that thing fixed. It's really weird to see him with a broken nose all the time. Uh, but the scene where he gets his head chopped off, I thought was okay. Much like in, in a condo where he gets eaten by the stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is, and the uh, thing says here, it's a fun house of shrieks and screams. It is not. Your movie is not scary. It is laughable. But this is the haunting 
And I suppose it's watchable because of Catherine Santa Jones. But that's pretty much it. The original is better. It's black and white. And I know a lot of you millennials out there don't like black and white because it's boring. It has no color. But there are a lot of people out there, younger people, that do enjoy uh, black and white movies. And if you are my kind of people and enjoy horror in all its forms, I would suggest you track down the original The Haunting. It builds atmosphere way better than the remake. Next movie I picked up is a blind buy, but I picked it up because I don't think I've ever come across a jewel case DVD, but this is the DVD release of The Revenant. Not to be confused with the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Revenant. Uh, this is uh, different. It's actually The Revenant, not The Revenant. Ha! <laughs> don't be me. But yeah, this, uh, I don't know what this is about. This fine because the jewel case looks unique. Now this one is a really good sci-fi movie that then all of a sudden turns into a sort of a slasher movie. But this is from Danny Boyle, director of 28 Days Later, Sunshine. It's the distant future and the sun is crapping out. So, uh, Earth sends a spaceship to try to reignite it. But this is the second attempt. So, when the second attempt encounters the first one, they meet a, <coughs> a guy from the previous mission that starts killing them off one by one. Really weird, really weird uh, tone shift because it's like this sci-fi movie that all of a sudden turns into a slasher movie. But, I kind of enjoyed it. I actually like this one quite a bit. So, give Sunshine a chance. Another blind buy, and it's actually a sequel, turns out. But this is Navy Seals vs. Demons. The sequel to Navy Seals vs. Zombies. Now, I didn't even know these two movies even existed. And that's the fun thing about horror movies. You can encounter weird-ass shit like Navy Seals vs. Demons or Zombies. Or something like, you know, Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies. Just... The world of horror is full of really diverse things. But another blind buy need to see it. It might actually be good. Who knows? Uh, pro wrestlers vs. zombies is enjoyably bad. But I liked it. Another blind buy still sealed is 666 The Demon Within. Uh, I read the synopsis and it kind of plays like well, it would be the best thing to compare, like, Rocky Horror Picture Show. But instead... Okay, that's weird. Phone's ringing. But instead of, you know, going to a castle and meeting a transvestite from uh, Transylvania, they meet the devil, and the devil's like, Hey, chick lady, you want to be immortal? And the chick lady's like, sure. Then just kill your newly husband, and you'll be immortal. And then start killing people, and, you know, you'll be immortal. Sounds interesting. But yeah, when I was reading the synopsis, for some reason, Rocky Horror Picture Show came into my head. Now, while I'm mostly a horror guy, I do add in these videos thrillers. Uh, all kinds of thrillers. Except political, that's mostly for the other guy. But thrillers of all sorts, I talk about here. Usually I would dump this to the other guy and get him in trouble for the title, but this one... <coughs> I decided to keep for myself because I am amazed that this series lasted four entries. They made a franchise out of this damn thing. But this is Wild Things. For some cuts, hits the fourth movie, so get it. For some, for. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, yeah, this is more uh, up my alley because if you know me. I love horror, and horror also has boobs, and this one has boobs, so ergo, I spotlight it. But honestly, how in the hell did they make four Wild Things movies? I mean, the first one is nothing really special. It doesn't have anything like memorable except Bill Murray and Kevin Bacon. Preposterous, I say, but it's there. And the next one I added is Godzilla. 
And this is Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, giant monsters, all out attack. And wow, is that a big title. Now, this already exists in the collection, but it's part of a triple pack between uh, Godzilla and King Ghidorah, uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra, and this one. But I saw this one single disc, and I had to pick it up, because why not? The next one, and we're almost out here, uh, is Death Trap, with Michael Caine, Superman himself, James Christopher Reeve, and Diane Cannon. And it's about this famous playwright that is suffering through writer's block, and he can't really, you know, come up with the next book. So he goes visit, he goes to visit his, one of his students, played by Christopher Reeve, and he's made this awesome playwright. Where it's perfect. Literally, they say in the movie that even the worst actor, I'm sorry, the worst director can fuck up this script. So Michael Caine's like, God damn it, that thing is so good. I'm gonna have to kill Superman himself to steal it and then pass it off in my own. And then Superman's like, screw you, Alfred. I'm not gonna let you steal my, you know, script. It's my baby. And chaos ensues because they're trying to kill each other. It's a nice throwback movie, and again, not many movies featuring Superman, so I thought that was worth a buy, for sure. The next one is one I saw on TV back in the day, because when they would announce a Stephen King movie, or miniseries in this case, I was like, ah, Stephen King's kind of hit or miss most of the time, great premise, but then the execution kind of falls flat, but now watch this one. And it's the Tommy Knockers. I always questioned the name. I thought it was pretty weird. But it's about this small little town. that all of a sudden, uh, the people in the town start developing superpowers. Like telepathy and the like. And there's this one guy that's like, Hey, what's going on? How come everyone has superpowers and I don't get jack shit? But the superpowers come at a high price because the people are turning into mind control ghouls. And it's up to the guy uh, to save the town. It's, again, interesting premise. The ending kind of like, bleh. Such is the case with most of Stephen King's adaptations. But uh, I picked it up because I remember, you know, being all hyped about it and having it fall flat on its ass. And the last one is one that I remember seeing, remember enjoying, but never came across the physical copy of it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's been released on Blu-ray, because most movies haven't quite gotten a Blu-ray release, but picked it up because it has Sigourney Weaver, and that's Copycat. It's a crime thriller about this serial killer that is copying other serial killers. So, you know, he's doing, he's recreating the kills of other people. And I remember it was pretty suspenseful, but again, it has Sigourney Weaver, so that's why I picked this baby up. And because I've never come across a copy of this. I'll have to revisit it to see if it still holds up, but I very much enjoyed it. Well, class, that was the horror DVD update video from yours truly. My gift from me to you. Now, usually on this channel we recommend the standouts of the haul. And... I am going to go with giant kaiju monsters. So, double team. In 2020, we're going to get this one of King Kong and Godzilla. Again, this version of King Kong might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoy it for what it is. And Godzilla, goes without saying, is amazing. Well, class, I know I say this often, but... I will try to pump out those reviews that I have planned. I do have some reviews, ideas uh, that I want to get to. I just need to actually sit down and do them. But until I see you all again, class, this is Professor Macabro, and I wish you all a good evening.